Well, this is one of the most intense projects I've ever worked on. Have you ever wanted to fly as a kid before? Well, as an engineer, the next thought is what can I make in order to send myself flying? Of course, in the good way. But before strapping myself to whatever contraption I make to put me above the ground, I would rather build something that flies. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that should come first. So here's how I embarked on developing my first ever model plane. It came to be my most challenging project yet due to some very particular reasons and also given the results. But you'll find out if that was worth it or not. It was definitely my biggest build of the year, so stay tuned to find out how it ended up. First of all, I understand aerodynamics, I think. But yeah, I did what every builder does, YouTube, how to build a model plane. Now, I've seen several model planes being built, but here's the problem. I had to build one following the following restrictions, a limited funding and limited availability of materials. So I searched and saw this tutorial by Joy Planes, which includes schematics and ratings of the companies they used, which was a huge help as I had barely any experience actually building one. Following the recommendations and due research on battery capacity, motor thrust, relationship to propellers, control of model planes, and all the complicated stuff and math, I got the following component list down. Three edge genuity servos, a styrofoam for preferably foam board, tape, barbecue sticks, a 30 amp ESC, lipo batteries, joysticks, straw board, 1mm wire, solderless breadboard or vero board with a soldering iron, jumper cables, banana connectors, a propeller blade, hot glue gun, and glue sticks straw screws rather and some nuts a pair of nrf 24 lo one 1.1 kilometer plus receivers two arduino nanos and a lot of work if i missed anything it will be in the description of the video now before we proceed guess in the comments whether i think it flew or not before getting to the end of the video and make sure to watch because a lot of things happened oh a message from today's sponsor me someday they will actually be a sponsor but for now if you watch this far thank you it means a lot and keep the channel going to my current 277 subscribers as of the recording of this video, you all are awesome and thank you for being a part of the channel. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't, drop a like as it boosts the video on the algorithm and turn on post notifications so you never miss a project video. Also make sure to comment what you think, it's my first time building a plane so I hope to see a lot of advice cause I made a lot of mistakes which I would talk about later. Moreover, recently someone was inspired by the robotic arm video I did a couple of months ago and their comment on how they started building theirs makes this much more worthwhile than I knew it could ever be. Thank you for your support and I'll pin the robotic arm video for you to check out. Now back to the video. First of all, I broke the project down into sections by creating a flowchart which can be summarized like this. The aim was to build a model RC plane that could be controlled wirelessly. So I needed, first of all, a model plane, obviously, I had to make one and any electronics to be able to attain flight and it must be remotely controllable flight which means a wireless transmitter and receiver. The flowchart breaks it down so I'll upload it with the schematics too. Now I wasn't able to buy the transmitter and receiver so I had to make my own. Why didn't I just buy it you may ask? Um, I'm a broke engineer, I mean I would be so overjoyed to make one from scratch and go through all that stress for more content. Yeah. First of all, I built a setup to control a brushless motor via the ESC with an Arduino, ESC standing for electronic speed controller. After building the circuit and uploading the code, I got it working using a potentiometer and then a joystick. I'll post a separate video on how that works entirely so I can explain it properly in the coming weeks. Next, I built the entire dual joystick and mechanism control for the brushless motor, ailerons and elevators which use these SG90 servos and the previous brushless motor control mechanism I made. Note, just ailerons and elevators, this would be very important later. Once that was done, I tested the setup and I could control the ailerons, elevator and speed of the brushless motor.
Then I made it wireless. Adding the NRF24 LO1 transceiver between the joystick and the rest of the system, I used transceivers which had antennas you can attach and can support up to 1.1 km range. I messed up the circuit board I soldered and proceeded to just stick with the solderless breadboard and glue. Not my finest moment, definitely not. If you want to see a full explanation on how to use joystick to console servos, I used a similar mechanism in my 4 degree of freedom robotic arm project which I pinned earlier on and I'll pin it again. Let's talk about batteries. Considering I'm a Brook engineer, I went with these 18650 cells in a 3S configuration which is the highest the motor could handle and getting tricked by the 1C 9900mAh rating on these batteries which I found out later was untrue. I shipped apart my brother's old laptop batteries and found these 4 LG cells which ran really really great. So I created the battery pack setup without a BMS since I was going to charge the cells individually. Um, yes, I couldn't afford them expensively for batteries but I would really soon, I would. I did the bunch of calculation and testing for approximate flight time and output based on the motor and power supply set specifications I had with me. After writing the code for the wireless transmitter and receiver setup, I got it to work and I had to add a timer fuel safe which allowed the electronics to stop all functions and return the aerons and elevators to their neutral state if the plane lost all signal. That way it doesn't fly based on its last received signal and then is lost in flight. Here's the schematic and code explanation for the entire transmitter and receiver. I'll be uploading the link in the video description. So now the code. Considering the code, obviously on my screen here you would see they include several that HB library being um, commented of. I come amongst a couple of other things, so just ignore it. In the one I'll upload, it should actually just be the pure code that you would need. The whole concept of the code is to begin your radio and assign the different variables for your throttle error on and your um, pitch. Okay, in this case, you have throttle roll and pitch, which come from your values of your aileron value, your elevator value, and your throttle value. So your Arduino is going to read the, the values from the joysticks, pass them onto the throttle roll and pitch, and then send that as a structured um, variable, which is a structure of data, which is signal, which contains throttle roll and pitch. On the receiving end, the, the Arduino is also going to pick up the, the data that's being sent via radio signal, assign those values, then use those values and map them to the um, from the 0 to 1, 0 to 3 is the analog to digital converter, the value that you get when it's converted, those values from 0 to 1, 0 to 3, and then map that between 0 and 180. And then it's going to now write using the um, servo library the values to the different servos and also the ESC because the ESC is communicated in the way you communicate it a servo, which is why you see ESC.write, same way you see elevator.write, aileron control.write, and then also prints that. So the print functions were there while I was actually just developing the code itself in order to be able to see what's going on before I could actually then test it out. So that is the whole function of the code. With the electronic set, I went on to making the body of the model plane. It was one of the most difficult things I've made for a couple of reasons. First of all, the styrofoam. It was my first time making a plane or pretty much anything complicated out of styrofoam. And because styrofoam is very lightweight and also very brittle, this made it very very hard to make out things out of. Making the wings, the frame and the rudder of the plane were very difficult. 
Here's how the building process went. Luckily, you guys can't hear my screams and pain as I assembled the frame because it was really, really difficult. Using the printed out 80% scale down plans I got from Joy Pens, I got to cutting and assembling the paint parts. So please enjoy the building montage and imagine I'm screaming in pain several times in the background. Basically arms itself basically and then I can now decide to put this on there's no data and then so fine 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 assuming it loses signal then it shuts off after losing signal one second after losing signal basically it goes off so so that was the case Everything basically goes back to origin states and then just shuts off. So that way, if this gets missing and this just goes off. So, yeah. There was so much glue and tape used to hold the frame together, I could honestly say the plane was made out of tape and glue and then some styrofoam. Well, I got the link mechanism idea for controlling the ailerons and elevators from the Joy Plane video, so please check out their channel, it was a big help. With the plane frame ready, including the landing gear, which I also made, I went ahead to install the electronics the best I could and with some testing, I was sort of confident and so I took it out. Before we proceed, if you are going to fly anything, please make sure to check out the drone laws in your region as to the weight and registration requirements. I may or may not have been abiding by them since I couldn't even register on the site. But my craft was within the requirements for the intended test flight and so I got to the testing it. So with my location set, a windy day with threats of rain and all tension in the world, I started preparing for the test flight. I put in the batteries and the electronics which failed on the first try due to a minor disconnection but I got that working and set it off. And then, take off. Or so I thought, more like failure. Everything is over. After reviewing what happened, I found out my flaws and major issues. Remember how I said only aileron and elevator control? Yeah, that was really really a problem. Mixed with the final weight, a very unstable landing gear, terrible material performance from the styrofoam and the use of recycled batteries which were very obviously a big problem, I could only achieve a very good taxi but one I could not even control due to lack of rudder control in my build. I also attempted to fly it by throwing it but <laughs> as you can expect that did not go well. So yeah, here's the end result as the coffin was closed on the plane. With months and weeks of planning and building down the drain, I went home disappointed and fulfilled knowing that things went wrong and it was just a failure in the learning process. If by chance I'm able to work on an airplane, I'll start with proper materials at a much smaller or less complicated scale and make sure that I actually get some of the important things which I noted down fixed and most definitely I would attempt one again. If you loved the video, make sure to drop a comment on what you thought about the end result and how it played out. I know the end result is disappointing but surely I will get there but for now you can watch how I made a voice controlled model house or how I revived my old gesture controlled vehicle after a kid literally killed it. Till next time, this is Legends.